And um, real quick, you are a veteran. A little history about yourself. A little history about yourself. I'm a first cat. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I went to Vietnam in 1968. I landed on the day that more soldiers were killed than any other time in the whole war. Wow. It was January 31st, 1968. Oh, wow. And when I got there, got off the plane, and all these guys, about 200, ran past and they were getting ready to get on the plane coming back home. <laughs> and I got 365 days to go. And I'm saying, wow, man, where is this place? And, I, and they said, y'all got it now, man. You got tech. I said, what's tech? They said, you'll find out, young man. You know, and everybody's coming by. I said, what's tech? You'll find out, young man. Yeah, what's tech? Nobody would tell me what tech was. So that evening, I went to the little beer hall. They had us in a, in a compound. And I said, I was scared. I said, well, where, where are my weapons? And they said, well, you see these guys in these 30-foot towels? They're pulling guard duty, and they're protecting everybody inside. And this is, this is a processing area. You'll be here for two or three days, getting you processed in. And then when you get to your base camp is when you get your weapons. So I go to the little beer place they had, and started drinking beer that night. And at 11 o'clock, I went to the little barracks, climbed in the bunk. A couple of hours later, 2 o'clock in the morning, every major military installation in Vietnam was hit at the same time. They found the readiness reports later and it showed where the Viet Cong had been digging for six months outside of all of these military bases. And they popped up out of the ground at 2 o'clock in the morning. And an explosion 29 miles away picked me up and threw me across the room. I hit the ground rolling, and I could hear all hell breaking loose outside. I remember the arms room was next door. So I ran out to the arms room, and when I ran out of the barracks, the Viet Cong was coming all over the wire, all over the cyclone fences, running through, shooting and throwing explosives. The arms room was next door. I ran to the arms room, and it was locked. And a guy was laying there in the door, and I didn't know whether he was dead or alive, I grabbed his weapons and ammo, and I ran to a bunker about where you are. When I got in that bunker, there were seven other guys in there. So we fought from 2 o'clock in the morning until just about 5 in the morning, and they finally broke contact. But you couldn't call for reinforcements because the reinforcements were getting hit too. Right. And so when everybody was running by me saying, you got Ted now, Ted is the Asian Lunar New Year. Mm. So we were coming off of Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's, and we're still kind of celebrating a little bit. <coughs> and on January 31st, that's their New Year. Mm. So everybody thought they were going to kind of lighten up, a little ceasefire maybe. But, that that was when they, but that's when they had planned to rip heaven, heaven. And so the, the Tet Offensive of 1968, right was the day that the most veterans died, I mean, the most soldiers died in combat and in those attacks. So I came back home and went on with life, was doing great, went through a divorce, lost everything, became homeless for two and a half years. And while I was out there, I was in jungle mode. And people said, well, how did you survive out there? Well, it was back in Vietnam, and it didn't mean nothing. And um, one day, I saw a sign that said, Labor Department, Veterans Employment. And I went in. I had long Afro combat boots, field jacket. And the guy said, uh, yes, sir, what can I do for you? And this guy was old. He was a vet rep. And he said, yes, sir, Mr. Coleman, come to my desk. And he says, well, OK, we're going to send you on some job interviews. He says, you might not get them. You just have to keep coming back. It's a full-time job looking for a job. It's OK. And he kept, he kept saying to me, yes, sir. This guy, like I said, was old, an old black guy. And I said, man, he sees me. He's giving me my dignity back. Right, right. And so came back two or three times, about the third time. I said, I said listen, I said, can I come in and just talk to you sometime? He said, sure. So I came in, and he started mentoring me. So one day he said, look, I want you to apply for this job like I got. I said, man, I'm not qualified for this. He said, well, first of all, you got to be a disabled veteran. You got that. 
You got to have some college and some psychology and sociology. I said, well, okay, you got to know that. And then he says, you're a sergeant in the military, so you got leadership, supervisor. So I applied. And uh, had, had a black ball on me. Nobody took me for five years. And I had to borrow a suit to even go for the interview. And I got cleaned up, went for the interview. And um, a couple of weeks later, I had a drop zone where I could get messages. And they told me that the Lake Department had called. And I got back with them. And they told me, you got the job. All right. So I started working with the Lake Department. And the first day that I sat down at my desk, I said, everybody that sits at my desk, I'm going to give them their dignity back. Mm -hmm. right. And everybody, and when I was out there homeless, man, I got caught from drug, alcohol, homelessness, PTSD, the whole nine yards. And I was saying, why me, why me? No answer. Well, now I understand why, 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 why me? Why not me? So I had basic training. I had Vietnam. You can't scare me. Right. And so <laughs> I didn't give a darn. So right. everybody that sat at my desk either had drugs, alcohol, homeless, PTSD, big lead girl, and left them. So these were all the things that I went through that made me a PhD. That's right. So I started taking care of these veterans that got the state of Georgia. I go into bridges, crack houses, drop zones, and go in and get them. Right. People say, well, look, man, you done got clean everything, man. The creator didn't clean you up to go back in those places, man, where you get caught up again. And I said, well, who's supposed to go get them? You know what I'm wow, wow, <laughs> wow. So um, veterans all over town, the word got out. They would come to my office and see they're all dirty, broke down, smelly. And they would wait all day. And the powers that be says, we can't have all these dirty folk sitting in our office, like pretty office like this, waiting on COVID. So they would come out and say, Miss COVID's backed up, you know, come back another day. So I told, I always would tell everybody, I'm gonna get to you. I'm gonna give you quality service, just like the person just left out back here. So just stay with me, don't let nobody run your way. So after that, they started trying to fire me. Mm. Oh, wow. So I ended up meeting the guy and said, look, we want you to come to Washington to testify at the Hope for the House Subcommittee of Oversights and Investigations. And I went up there and I testified before Maxine Waters, Charlie Ringo, okay. Sid Kennedy, six others like you see on C-SPAN. And I told that they were misappropriating funds in the state of Georgia for veterans in the Labor Department and other agencies that I was involved with. Maxine Waters says, Mr. Coleman, are you telling this subcommittee the money we send out at the beginning of the year that your superiors, directors, and section chiefs are misappropriating that money? Is that what you say? Boy, he said, oh, man, she's going to jack this brother up. <laughs> and I said, well, Mr. Madam Chairman, perhaps I misspoke. And she said, I thought so. Would you like to clear it up? And I said, yes, Madam Chairman. I said, instead of saying that they were misappropriating, I must say they were embezzling it. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I said, yeah. And they start banging gavels. <laughs> so when they finally got order, Congressman Charlie Rainer out of Harlem says, we need more people like Cole. So we're going to put together a Veterans Brain Trust. Mm. And the first appointment we're making is Coleman, you're now the national chairman for Black Veterans and Blood Training Nationwide. Wow. And then they appointed 11 other committees. And so that was in 1992. So every September, and in Washington during the Congressional Black Caucus. That's right. We have three days, of veterans, everything. We have experts, we have congressmen, senators, people from the VA, people from the medical, from the psychological, the whole nine yards. A couple of years ago, we honored black women veterans. I took three women. I took the first black woman director of the Atlanta VA, Mrs. Wiggins. And then I took a secretary, Tynesy Lynch, who I hired at the Labor Department. Mm. And then I had um, Hosea Williams' daughter. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Hosea Williams was deceased, uh, his daughter was representing. And so, um, so after I came back and testified, we got a new commission of labor. And he was a Vietnam veteran in the Air Force the year after I left Vietnam. He sent for me. And I said, man, the, the big man just got here, man. He called me to his office. 
I said, he's calling me in the fire. So when I got there, he said, I guess you're wondering what you're here for. I said, well, yes, sir. He said, well, I've heard about the lawsuits that you've been filed. And I heard about you testifying in Congress. Uh, that's what I'm looking for is someone that's going to fight for veterans. So I want to offer you a position on my staff. Mm. He had six people on the staff, three white women and three white men. And I said, well, sir, can I have it for Friday? I said, sir, can I have a weekend to think about this? He said, sir, sure. All weekend, I'm saying, man, this is a setup, man. He's bringing the enemies close. He's going to bring me and drop the hammer because I'm too outspoken. And, and so he's got to do it close. like. So late Sunday night, a voice says, maybe this is what you've been asking for and a way to be able to help more veterans. So I went in that Monday morning. I told him I'd take the position. He said, great. He says, I've got to speak to the American Legion Convention in Columbus, in Augusta, Georgia. I want you to go with me. I said, okay. So we get in the car. He's got his drive. We start going the wrong way. We're going out towards Fulton Industrial Boulevard. <laughs> we go out to Charlie Brown Airport. We walked in a hangar. And they had DC-9s, Piper Clubs, Lear Jets, and a, and a pilot walked out. And the commissioner picked the plane out, and we flew to Augusta. <laughs> so when he got there to speak and everything, he said, oh, by the way, uh, Morocco, stand up. I want to introduce the newest member of my staff. And so there are 131 Labor Department offices throughout the state of Georgia. And each one has a section that's called DVOPs and LBRs. They are veterans representatives. They're all disabled, and they get the jobs before the civilians and programs and the whole nine yards. And I was one of them, and they wouldn't let us do our jobs. That's why I testified. So now the commissioner sends me, was sending me around the state. I've been retired 23 years now. But the commissioner would send me around the state, and everywhere that I went, I represented him. So I had the power of the commissioner. And so I was able to do some fantastic things for veterans, widows, etc. Like I said, I've been retired 23 years. When I get home in a little while, I'll probably have two or three phone calls from somewhere around the country. Mm. Mr. Coleman, I'm calling from Children's Switch, Arkansas. My buddy in Chicago said, so you have to win the VA to get his benefits, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> now I'm calling, and usually I can triage, get them lined up, tell them what to do, work them through it, and get them their disabilities. If it gets a little too heavy, I just call one of the congressmen and senators that I make sure that I network with when I go to D.C. And so that's my story. <laughs> still today. Yeah, right. Still today. Yeah. Give it up for this brother. Give it up. Give it up. Yeah.